Matthew chapter 13. <clears throat> the same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. Moving on. This is after, you know, your mother and your brother are on here. Great multitudes gathered together unto him. So that's what made the Pharisees and Sadducees mess. He had the following. But don't go right away thinking today, you know, we got the mega church, we got all these people in the church. You're not Jesus. A lot of these people were following Jesus because they were sick, need healing. They were leprosy, they need to be cleansed. They were blind, they needed to see. They were dumb, they needed to talk. And they were devil possessed. If you got that going on in your church today, that's wicked and vile. Jesus did not use smoke machines, rock and roll, come as you are, all are welcome. Movie night, bowling night. He didn't use no gimmicks. He didn't use no worldly means of carnival and carnality. And yet, the multitude of people that you read about in the gospel are the same multitude that turned their back on him. On the way to the cross. They wanted something. So that he went into a ship. And sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. He spake many things unto them in parables saying. Oh look at that. There's a funny looking church. The people are sitting on the sandy beach. The pulpit is a ship. Jesus is sitting. He's using the acoustics of the water to vent his voice out so it can be heard. There's no building. And there's no church. There's no people saved. And one of the greatest messages of Jesus, of many messages he had, the pulpit was a boat. The pews were the beach. And I guarantee there wasn't clampy scanned women walking around there like that either. Now, the parable we're going to read today about the sower and the seed. It's in Mark and it's in Luke. This parable shows up more times than the birthday of Jesus. And yet you don't see no Baptist church celebrating. You don't see no Baptist churches really going out. Door knocking, street ministry. Oh, here's a little card with our church name on it. Give this to your family and friends and neighbors. No. Because we're going to see in a moment what the seed is. And it ain't your church information. And he spake many things unto them in parables. This is a parable. This is a story to illustrate a thing of life. This is number one called mysteries of seven in this chapter. Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he had sown, and we're going to read through this, and we will discuss when Jesus tells his disciples the meaning. So we'll go through it. When he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
and the fowls, the birds, came and devoured them up. Some fell on stony places where they had not much earth. Now there are four grounds of this seed. Where I was forth with, they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Death. Some fell among thorns. That's the curse of Adam. And the thorns sprang up and choked them. Other fell on good ground, brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. Not everybody got it. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou them in parables? You know, some of the people are coming. What did that mean? Tell us, what, 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 what did Jesus say? And as the parable for the people, he didn't give the expository of what he said. He just said what he said, the parable, and boom, left it like that. I would advise maybe some got it, and many did not. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, the disciples, to know the mysteries. All right, there's, there's where they get the mysteries. Not the wrong saying mysteries. There are mysteries of the gospel, and there are mysteries of Paul. Don't get them confused. Now look at that. Mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. That's not church. Those multitudes, there was not one Christian. Now, there may have been Gentiles. You couldn't have a multitude of people without having Gentiles. But I guarantee, I absolutely can assure myself that in that multitude, there were no Christians. Right, the fact is, I, I know one pastor, that there are Christians in the Old Testament. You know, you're foolish. There's a church in this area, Daytona, and on the time, I don't know what this is, but all I got to see on their sign is kingdom. All right. You're not a church preaching, teaching. I don't know what to say after that. <clears throat> the church is never, never about a kingdom. When the Christian dies, he'll go to heaven, but his ultimate is New Jerusalem. That's not a kingdom. That's a city. Kingdom of heaven, there are birds floating around. There, there are men walking. There are trees. There are grapes. And um, I'm trying to think where my notes are. I got some notes here. Where is it? Oh, kingdom of heaven. I'll find it. In Mark, it's the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God is that spiritual kingdom. That kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God was never church age. That kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven is what Adam had, too. He lost. That kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God is the millennial kingdom where the primary subject is the king of kings and the lord of lords and you can't that Jesus is not the king of the church the only time he's ever king of the church is when the bible speaks him to the king and he's the king of kings and we will be called some some Christians not all Christians will have a right to an inheritance of being a king of a city. Well, you can't say the church because many are not going to get that inheritance of a king. So when you go read into this, this parable, and I have used the illustration for a Christian, how to grow, but the doctrinal statement of this parable is a Jewish kingdom. 
Now you can apply it spiritual. Many messages come out of this spiritual. But don't go fit Christian in it. For whosoever have, to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance, get more. But whosoever has not, to him shall be taken away, even that he has. You have got life. And you come to Christ. For the Christian. You come to the law. You come to the Messiah. You'll get eternal life. You Christian gets New Jerusalem. He gets gold, silver, precious stones if he's earned them. A Jew will get the land. The Jew will get Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Jew will get a, the city. He'll get the, the, uh, the king of kings, the lord of lords. Else if you do not, and I'm going to apply this both doctrinally and spiritually. If you don't adhere to what God says to do, both, whether you're in this day and age of the church age, not a Christian, you're lost, Jew or Gentile, or here you are during Christ's time of the law, you do not do the law, you do not obey God, you lose it all and end up in a place called hell. Therefore speak I unto them parables, because they seen, seen I. It's all in the heart again. It's not that God is robbing them. It's they don't want it. In John chapter 6, there's going to be raised a big issue. Jesus fed them bread and fish. And he takes off. And they go chasing after him. And then they find him. And he tells them outright, and I forget how he says it, but he says, listen, you didn't come for the word. You came because I fed you. You came for the bread. And a lot of these churches, and we were in a church where, where they had the, the soup kitchen, the, 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 the chicken for the homeless and all that. The homeless only came for the food. And it's funny because they had offered by stores, they had little desserts that had passed its aid, and they would be given out free. And one of the jobs I had was I had to take a black magic marker. I had to cross out the barcode because what they were doing is they were taking that. If, if there was a barcode, they were going back to the store saying, you know, I, really, I didn't want I bought this. I really didn't want it. I lost my receipt. Can I get some money or can I get exchange? See what Jesus is saying is there's some people, you know what? They come to church. All right, let's bring it up today. They come to church. They're not saved. They don't want to have anything to do with God. Every church, well, most churches will have that, that the bulletin. Well, I remember the Catholic Church, their bulletin was on the back page with all the advertisers that have given to that bulletin, given to the church. So as a Catholic, you turn around and say, well, I need a plumber. Well, here's a Catholic plumber. <laughs> And his name is back here, so he had to give money to the Catholic Church, so I'm going to call him. And there are many, many companies that will bring people in. There are many people who got their own business. They will come into a church for business, for contacts. I got, man, I, a church I, 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 I see, I, I watch. I got, I got mad the other day. They had it in the church and they had television cameras, uh, the special thing because they were going to uh, uh, put into service the sheriff elect. I, I don't care. That does not belong in your church and that was a member of your church. That's not the place. I don't care if the preacher was a pol police officer in the Pines Pack. The church is not to ordain the office of the government, that's church and state. And some people may hate I said that. I don't care. See, we got a whole misreputation what the church is. 
It's a body of believers that are supposed to live. No church is perfect. It's supposed to be as perfect as it can be. We are not to be relishing in the soil and adultery with the world and the devil like it does. I don't know how many churches I've been in. A bounce house. What is that to do? It's nonsense. And hearing, they hear not. They, they don't hear the word of God. Ask them 15 minutes as they're walking out of the back or front, whatever door you walk out of that church. 15 minutes. No more than 15 minutes. Can I stop? You were in church ever today? Yes. You weren't in nursery or no. So you sat there and heard the message. Yes. Can you tell me what the message was about? And you won't believe how many people won't. You just heard it less than 15 minutes ago. I sat under a pastor one time. The only reason why I recognized the message and remembered it because it was a copy from another preacher. What? And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Hey! That's Greek for Isaiah. Greek Isaiah is E. Hebrew Isaiah is I. You learn Hebrew and Greek in two days. Woohoo! Remember Jonas and Jonah? <laughs> oh, oh. Well, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Go, go to work Friday. Hey, hey, go workers. Come here. Let me tell you something. Isaiah's in the E is, is, he, is Greek, and Isaiah's in the I is Hebrew. Yeah. <laughs> And then the person, well, let me tell you what I did with this woman over the weekend. Well, let me tell you how many beers I had in the bar. So? <laughs> you know, and these, I, I, I sat on the preacher, the Hebrew and the Greek. They don't care. And this is what you do. If you're in church and you hear that Hebrew or Greek, look around. And watch the faces of the people. They don't care. Which say it. By hearing they shall hear. And not understand. So hearing gives you understanding. If you got somebody who doesn't hear. They don't understand. If you're trying to show somebody something. This is your job, and, you, and this is how we do it. Maybe your job has one particular way of doing something. And you're, you're explaining to them, and they're over there talking uh, about what, what their weekend's coming up, or they're waving to everybody that walks by, or they're reading a magazine, or whatever. And they're hearing you, but they're not catching it. They don't understand. And you'll ask them that question. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, no, you don't. And seeing, ye see, and shall not precede. Perception is seeing. There's a lot of things. That they have optical illusions. They're funny because you can see. Oh, I didn't see that. How did I miss that? A police officer who is investigating an incident on a street, whatever it is, will ask, all the people that were there that saw the accident, and he'll get eight different descriptions of the same person that was. Oh, well, you know, it was a blue Toyota. It was a green Ford. It was an orange Studebaker. It was a. I'm a man. I used to, when I worked for the newspaper, with, and for the towing company was, you know, they called me on the radio. Style, you got go over this house, such not, such and such number. It's a blue house at the end of the street. You get down there, you find the house number. Uh, I don't know what to talk about. The house is white. They don't even know what color the house is. You wouldn't believe people like that. It's true. Hearing is understanding, and seeing is, is to perceive perception. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. To know the knowledge of the wisdom and understanding of the holy, you got to hear and you got to see. Now, when you prescribe that to a church, you ain't going to understand nothing if you don't have the word of God. And you're not going to notice anything with your perception is when you go to church and there is something that will distract you. That's the problem of skits and, and flower arrangements. And I've sat there in the church service and the flower arrangement and that thing just distracted me. If you don't believe me, when you go to church one time, and if there's a bee or a fly flying around, you watch that, they will watch that bee. If there's a little bug or a little worm, a child will pay attention to that bug or that worm. If you got a child who's drawing pictures in, in the bulletin, and, you know, to keep him quiet and all that, his siblings are going to be turning and watching him draw. You're not understanding nothing, and you're not perceiving nothing, though you've been sitting in church. How do I know? Well, what was the message about? And remember, but did you see that dress what Mrs. Such and Such were wearing? I don't think that tie fit, matched the pastor's outfit. For the people's heart is wax grows. That means worse. Wax is the, it's more. I could, personally, I, I could never understand that word wax myself in the Bible. Because when I think of wax, you light a candle and the wax just drips down. So. And their ears are dull of hearing. That's any age. Adam's ears were dull. What did God tell him? Don't eat of that fruit. What did he do? Their eyes have they closed. It goes way back to Adam and Eve. Their eyes were open <laughs> to the wrong thing. At least any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears what is wrong. What they're seeing, what they were hearing, here is the miracle hearing, healing of Dr. Jesus. What about Savior Jesus? What about the Messiah Jesus? Crucify him. Crucify him. Now let me ask you a question, Mr. S and I'm not against it, but let me ask you, Mr. Soup Kitchen Church. If the truth laid out before Pilate, and the people said, crucify him, crucify him. What would you think on the way to the cross if Jesus would have grabbed seven loaves of bread and two fishes and blessed them and broke them out for everybody that was there? They would have stopped him from going to the cross. Not because he was a savior. No! No! He was the restaurant entrepreneur. And there are Baptist churches today. You know, we've got to feed them. 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 And I look at it as like a hot dog sizzling put into hell. The church today fattens the people up so they can be plump and juicy in hell. And my, my, da my dad was like that. He dead probably in hell today. He come to my church, oh, that, was a, that was an interesting message. A little over my head, but, and then he heard me preach, like, wow. And he would tell people, because my son's a preacher. And there was a couple of times I found out later on, even that he went to my brother's church. I said, well, how was it? I said, I know some of the people there, never been to that church. I said, how was it? Oh, they had good food. And, oh, this woman's potato salad was excellent. Huh? And, the word. <laughs> I 
I didn't hear nothing about the word. I heard about the fellowship. How nice the people were. Well, that don't get you to heaven. With watch. At least any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, should understand with their heart and should be converted. And I should heal them. They wanted the healing without the conversion. At one point, I think it's the Gospel of John, they were going to make him king. Because Jesus fed them. And they were at the point, hey, if this man can feed us, he can conquer Rome. And boy, we got it. Here we are. But they forgot about the suffering servant, Isaiah 53. Israel today, when if you were to ask them, say, here's Isaiah 53. Read it in the English or the Hebrew. What is Isaiah 53? Well, it's a nation of Israel who has been terrorized by the Gentiles. No, it's not. It's about your Savior. He came. Your Messiah came. And you guys crucified. Well, we don't believe in that. See, they hear it. They see it. But they've got a whole different perspective. Because they have chosen to reject God. And you got somebody going to church and their mindset is I'm not I'm gonna go to church because I want her as my, my wife or I want to get a business associate. I want you know anything but God, they're gonna walk out still as unbeliever. I don't care how many French fries you give, I don't care how much chicken you give, I don't care how many Tootsie Rolls you give their children. But blessed are your eyes, the disciples, for they see your ears, for they hear. And there are many in the, in the Baptist church are like that. They understand, they learn, they get more. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see these things which you see. What? Jesus. The miracles the Messiah is doing. And I've not seen them. And to hear those things which which you hear and have not heard them. Abraham and all them, they never saw the Messiah. Instead of the Messiah, Abraham and Isaac saw a goat. Jesus is the Lamb of God. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Okay, now Jesus, he's got the disciples by themselves. All right, here's what it is. When anyone heareth the word, that seed that was sown, um, where is it? Verse 4, and he sowed some seeds, fell. All right, the very first thing again, doctrine, very first thing, spiritualizing this thing. The sower that goes out sows the word. He doesn't sow Tootsie Rolls. He doesn't sell the church. He doesn't sell the, the, the fellowship. He doesn't sell the movie. He doesn't sell the, the baseball team. He doesn't sell how great my preacher is. He doesn't sell how great my church is. The word. The word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. If your church is not sowing the word, forget it. You're not doing it. Again, I, I've been in churches, and you get, you get these little cards, you get these little information, all about the church times and the phone numbers, and the, that's not the word. There was another preacher the other day. He's trying. Well, you know, I hear some people say you can't get saved by another. And the guy, the King James Bible, believes me. You know, that's kind of ridiculous because you can get saved by the modern version. Wimp, you're a wimp. You let the devil. Because. If you have the Word of God, if it is the very Word of God, okay. If it's not the Word of God and changes the Word of God and removes the blood, removes the salvation, removes the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have the Word. 
You're not doing what God told you to do. The word of the church? No. Church is not a kingdom. There's a bunch of people running around that says that their church is a kingdom. The kingdom all. Huh? They're liars. The Baptist church will take what I just read and they'll say, they see the word church floating in the air. And then they'll turn around and blast the Jehovah Witness. This is not church age doctrine. Now, again, you can apply it church age, but you know, for the church, you really got to now, you got to stretch things <laughs> and understand it now. So you go out there, you, you you have a Bible, you have gospel tracts with scripture in there. You go out knocking on doors, you go out preaching on the streets, you go out doing one-on-one -on -one with people. Now the world and the church will tell you, everybody gets saved. You've been in a public ministry for two months now, and not one person's got saved, and you've gotten a finger, and you've gotten cussed at, you've got yelled at, you've got judged not, least to be judged, and that's not how the things are done. You're turning people away. That's not my church. And you preach the word, the whole word, and nothing but the word. Jesus told you there will be people when you go with the word, they're not going to understand it. How's that? And not understand. So I would take for the fact is that means not everybody's going to be saved. Now watch. Now remember in verse number four, there were birds. Wow. All right. Here's, here's the verse. Then cometh the wicked one. All right. The wicked one. Just so in case you know, I'm over here. I find my notes. Okay. Where I'm at. The wicked one. In Luke, no. In Mark, it's Satan. And Luke, it's the devil. What's the difference between the devil and Satan? The spelling. But they're the same. They're the wicked one. Now, run that verse. So I forget which Thessalonians it is. And it talks about the, the Antichrist. That matches. And shall raise that wicked one. And it goes on about the Antichrist. Well, that's the devil and Satan. Scripture with Scripture. So you can't completely violate Matthew. Matthew with Scripture with Scripture, even with Paul. Hey, that's and Mark and Luke, that's Satan. So learn first thing. I'm going to go out and I'm going to tell Jesus, I'm going to tell people about Jesus. Whether, however I do the public ministry, if it's Bible approved, I'm going to knock it on doors, I go street preach, I go deal with people, I go passing out gospel tracts. The very first thing, let me learn, Satan is going to show up. Well, Paul says in Corinthians, the God of this world has blinded their minds, the least they should believe. Not everybody's going to get saved. And listen, if you've been in any public kind of ministry, you have seen Satan show up and devour that word. They ripped the gospel track from me. I had one time, we were at a flea market. I was talking with this per this this man, and I thought this, I thought this guy was going to get saved. I was like, wow, man, this is going good. I'm praying while I'm talking to him. And we're, we're going about a good, comfortable voice. And he's asking questions, and I'm answering. And I'm asking him questions about salvation. We turn around. And I thought, man, this is it. This is the nail. It's going to nail Jesus to the cross. This man's going to get saved. We're going there. And his wife said, honey, come over here. Look at this stuff on this table over here. And Satan swallowed that all that seed. That man went over to that table and never came back. We never talked again. Now, I'm not saying that seed's in the heart. and Maybe later on it'll be watered. Paul says some plant the seeds and some will water. But that, that moment, Satan came on. Oh, look what's on this table, dear. And let me give you a warning about a public ministry, whatever you're doing with. Especially teenagers. If you got two or three teenagers as a group or more, you're not getting anywhere.
Because you may attract that one person, but the two other three idiots that were with him are going to hamper your, your witness. Now, if you can get that person off alone and talk, But realize, the very first ground, Satan, the wicked one, catches away that which was sown in his heart. So, scripture with scripture with that, this is seed that gets into the guy's heart. He, he, he got it. He got the gospel track, and he opened it, and he read it, and Satan says, there's other things important. I think it's funny, when we used to have our ministry in Norwich, my son would be passing out gospel tract. And I would have to sit there and pray, because you'll see somebody open up the gospel tract and start reading. It's like, oh, Lord God, please let them not run into that pole. Let them not bump into that newspaper thing. Because they were right there. <laughs> and you know, Satan would have them run into that pole just to close that track and say, that's it. Or trip over the newspaper thing. I would have to pray that prayer. I've never seen it happen, but can't underestimate the power of Satan to keep his lost ones. Ground number one is they don't get saved. This is he which received the word by the wayside. Wayside people, Satan is taken away. Number two. But he that receiveth the seed into stony places. And you can run this back up to verse 5. The same is he that heareth the word. Okay? He hears what you're preaching. You're on the street, you're preaching. A nun, and that means... Do, 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 let me find it. Uh, that means immediately in Mark. You learned another word. Woo. Now go to work Friday. Oh, tomorrow, uh, your Thanksgiving, your family, and the kids are, a nun stop play right now. Sit at the table, a nun. They'll look at you like, I don't think this guy's got a nun sense. What's he talking about? A nun with joy receiveth it. What's that mean? Some will take it. The guy is saved. It's in his heart. He heard it. And he's got it with joy. Yet has he no has he not root in himself? He's no confidence in himself. But dureth or endureth for a while. For when tribulation, trials and troubles and persecution. Uh, you're a Christian? You can't come to family outing because you're a Christian? I'll leave her now. What's wrong with us? You don't do Christmas? Are you telling me uh, your dad and I have all these years we've been heathen, we've been uh, with the devil because we taught you Christmas? How about this one? You go, you go into a church. Hey, King James Bible, that's not the way to God. Easter, we're going to keep. I don't care what you say. Arrive it because of the word. Well, there's your conflict with the King James Bible believers and the modern English. What are you going to do with that one? And when you come up to Paul, you'll find out people were corrected in the Word of God during Paul's time. By and by, he is offended. Well, that's this generation. So, in the church age, he gets saved. He gets trials and tribulations. He don't get the promotion. His family hates him. 
Their churches are against him. The Catholic Church hates him now. He gets offended and he goes off. And in the church age, he's saved and he doesn't lose. Let's go to work when Jesus is under the law. What happens if under the law you do right, you do right, you do right, and, and whatever reason, all that, you just say, you know what, I'm not doing it no more. This law, it's too hard, it's too difficult, and, and, and you know, the Gentiles have more money than what I have. During the time of the law, if he would be offended and leave... <laughs> Because the word right now is the word of Moses and the prophets. And during this time that Jesus has not died, not suffered, not been buried, not rose again, if he's offended in the word, which would be Moses and the prophets, he'd die and go to hell. That's a lot of big teaching compared to what the church is, isn't it? He also that received the seed, number three, among the thorns. He that beareth the word and the cares of the world. Oh, you know, I can't go to church Wednesday nights because that television program's on. It's the major game of the year the, of whatever I'm watching. Right now it's soccer. Can I say something about the soccer event? You know? It's in Qatar, or however you say it. American breweries, beer companies, are all upset and going to court because they can't sell their beer at that soccer match because the Muslims will not allow alcohol beverages. I'm going to say a bad word here. I don't care what you Why in the hell is alcohol forbidden by the prophets? I mean, by Muslims. But it's not forbidden in a Christian nation as America. Why is it Daytona 500, which is just around the block from us, they can run around with their cars with Budweiser and Bush all over it. And they're Christian. I mean, I preach at the Daytona 500, I don't know how many years in a row. And a lot of those race fans will see us preaching and see us gospel dress, and they'll just, you know, hey, I'm a Christian on a Sunday, not in church. Having beer. Wearing the, the, the clothing of our idols, of our golden calves that go around in circle, circle, circle. And the Christian nation that America is supposed to be, they sell their booze, and their booze is painted on the cars. And never mind the ballpark where it's on the back uh, wall, or the skating ring, it's on the skating wall, whatever it is. Alcohol in a Christian nation is promoted. And the hell-bound Muslim says, no, we're not, no, no alcohol. Allah or Mohammed, one of them says no. The Bible and Jesus says no, we're going to have it. Let me tell you, America Ninevites, the Muslims are going to stand up and judge you at the judgment. Jehovah, okay, Jesus, you're the Lord. Jesus, you're the Lord. Jesus, you're the Lord. But look, those Americans. Hey, you know, you know the story in, in the Old Testament? Our prophet, our God, Allah, and Muhammad said we're not to drink alcohol. Sound familiar? And we did not drink alcohol, and we did not allow alcohol. Sound familiar in the Bible? The Rechabites? Jeremiah? God, Jehovah's going to say, all right, Americans, what do you think about that, Mr. Christian Nation? Ooh. And by the way, those alcohol industries, alcohol, all alcohol, pays, bribes, and endorses our candidates, Republicans too, for their nastiness and their sins. I wonder what a Muslim would do. 
There's some things these Jehovah's Witnesses believe I believe. I wonder what a Muslim would do if a Muslim drove home intoxicated and crashed his car into innocent Muslims and killed some of them, but not all of them. I wonder what the Muslims would do, and I guarantee whatever their penalty of their law would be, the Americans would rise in turf and that's wicked, that's vile. Meanwhile, how many people who have done the same thing in America, going out and kill somebody in alcohol, are sitting in jail, or sitting at home, and some lawyers got them off? I see too many ads for, for alcohol. This ain't going to cost you nothing. Arrested for intoxication. Come see us. We'll get the charges dropped. You, I want to swear right now. You're going to stand before God, Mr. Lawyer. Okay, back to where we were. Thorns and hear the word and the cares of the world. Oh, that's where we were at. The ball team, the ballerina, the, the, the vacation, the, uh, you know, the, the television show. The deceitfulness of riches. Well, you know, I got to go to work. Good paying. I get a lot more money than that Christian in the church. You know, I got to rise that corporate ladder. Choke. The word. And he becomes unfruitful. In the church, he, he's saved. He ain't getting no rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. No gold, no silver, no precious stuff. That's church. What would a Jew be under the under the law? If he forsakes Moses and forsakes the prophets and forsakes Je uh, Jehovah, you're going to die and go to hell. And verse 21 and 22, you got some characters in the Old Testament. That There's a man that came to Jesus. But at the point he came to Jesus, he says, Jesus, what must I do to have eternal life? He says, listen, honor your mother, don't lie, don't steal. He says, hey, I have done all of that. And Jesus doesn't rebuke him. He kept the law. He says, all right, take what, you, take what you have, sell to the poor, take up your cross and follow me. All right, covetousness. Oh, no, I can't do that. I got so much money in my home, man. Oh, no. <laughs> Goodbye, Jesus. There he is. You know what his sin was? Thou shalt not covet. Under what Jesus said right now, that man, if he never got right with God, died and went to hell. Now, if he was in the church age, he'd go to heaven, but he'll have wood, hay, and stubble. Do you see the difference between the Old Testament and and the church? What about the tribulation period when they're under the law? But he that receiveth the seed, number four, on good ground. Notice it doesn't say earth, it says ground. Is he that heareth the word, one, okay, Look at verse 20. He heareth the word. Look at verse 22. He heareth the word. Verse 19. He heareth the word. They all heard the word. But what did Jesus just say previously about perception? What did I just say for those 15 minutes after the message of the church? They have no idea what they heard. All right, he heareth the word. 
People will hear what you say. And the question is, what do they do with what they hear? I mean, listen, I preach on the street. There are many people that just walk by me. And you think, oh, they don't care. They heard. How do you know they heard? Because there'll be the few people that walk by and they'll say something to you. They'll argue with you. And that just tells me, hey, thank you, Lord, they heard me. I mean, there are times on the street ministry I would pray all around, but you know, Lord, are they listening? Are they hearing me? Am I too loud? Am I not loud enough? Well, and they're not even five minutes. Why don't you shut up? Well, thank you, Lord. Or somebody walks by, hey, hey, man, glory to God, what you doing? Thank you for it. I say, thank you, Lord, for answering prayer. They hear. Even they open a couple of pages of that gospel track. They heard. That's why when you go knocking on doors, hi, I am Jim Brom from XYZ Church. No, no, because the door has been slammed. You say, hi, Jesus Christ suffered and died, buried, rose again the third day from. All right, if the door's been slammed, you just gave them the gospel. That's what Jesus told you. Go out and preach the gospel. Not you, not your church. And they slammed the door at that point. They heard the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. You've done what you're supposed to do. How's that? Oh, I didn't get my church in there. You don't know who I am. Who cares about you? Who cares about your church? The church is a universal body of believers. You trying to tell me if that guy gets saved, God has no power for him to find a church? I told a pastor one day, now you don't tell him about the churches or anything like that. I said, we're in Daytona Beach, Florida. I said, we've got Daytona 500. We've got the, uh, uh, the, the, bike, the bikers. We've got the college students. Uh, something else we got that. we got all kinds of events down here. You could talk to somebody from Kansas. They get saved. They don't care about your church in Daytona Beach. Now, they want to find a church where they live in Kansas, wherever they are. I will help them find a church. After I'm sure they're saved. I won't put them in church if they're not saved. Because they're not in the church. Let's move on. And understand it. Understand, whoa, 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 what was understanding? Hearing. And then they perceive what they heard. And Jesus suffered and died and was buried and rose again for me. And all have I'm, I'm a sinner. Sounds like I need Jesus. Oh. What, what, what did that man, the prisoner, say? What must I do to be saved? He heard what they were singing. I guarantee Paul was singing about the Bible. I guarantee Paul and Silas were singing about Jesus. They weren't singing this crap that's in the churches today. Which also beareth fruit. The guy becomes a soul winner, and he goes out and wins souls. And the church will say, well, bingo, he's saved. Well, what about the other ones? What about three and two? Not sure about one. You know, he got saved, and the, and the riches of the world, and the job, and everything like that. He said, that's it, I'm done. i got to work on Sundays. One Sunday became two Sundays, two Sundays became three weeks of Sunday, three weeks of Sunday became three months of Sunday, three Sunday, three months of Sunday became three years of Sunday. Are you saying he's not saved? How about the guy before that? He gets saved and all that, and the family and all that gives him a hard time. He got saved and his wife or his husband, I don't want that. You, you, I'll divorce you if we keep on, you keep on doing that. Well, you know, he should. Yeah, he should. What about you should? We can name some you should that you don't do. All right, so he bears fruit. Ready? Challenge number one for the Baptist church. Some a hundred folks. Everything. I, we get thousands of people in our church. We get hundreds of people in our church. I, we got 10,000 people saved in our church. Our, everybody at our revival meetings got saved last week from our church. That's good. 
Some 60. Not 100, but it's 60. But you're not, you're not a good Christian. You don't win as many souls as I do. You ever hear that one? Well, you know, I, I give them the invita invitation, and they come up to the altar, and they say this prayer, and <laughs> that's like all eyes closed, all heads bowed. I see that hand, and I was like, I don't see no hand. All right, keep on going. Some 30. 30 is better than nothing. Listen, just because you don't see, we were six years at the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market ministry, street preaching, my daughter getting gospel tracks out. Are you telling me in 60 years, because we didn't see anybody outright get saved, are you trying to tell me in six years that none of that work came to avail? Maybe God's like, I don't want you to see nothing because I know the pride of your heart. I'll wait till you get to heaven before you see what happens. I still pray for them. I got those names that are in my prayer book. And I go try to go through my prayer book every day and go through those names. I don't know. I met. I, I, I didn't meet her, but there was a, there was a girl that attracted my eyes at the Passion Walk many, 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 many years ago when we were in Norwich. I got a picture of her holding a gospel trap. I don't know who she is. I don't have no idea. She don't know who I am. And because of that picture, I lays on my heart as often as I think about I, the little girl from the Passion Walk in a year. Well, you know, everybody didn't get saved. Yeah, but the problem is, did you read the first ground? Satan come and took all the seed. And if Jesus said a hundredfold, I guess even if Satan shows up and takes the seed, Paul will say later on, I have watered Paul and Paul's. God gave me. Even if Satan takes the seed, they still might get saved. Now, under the law, if you take this verse, they're definitely going to heaven. No, they don't. What do you mean? You're saying they're lost? No, I'm not saying they're lost. Under the Old Testament, they didn't go to heaven. They went to Abraham's bosom. Oh, do you see the bigness of the Old Testament and the church and how much they're different? When a Christian dies today, Paul says he's absent from the body and he's present with the Lord. When you died in the Old Testament, you died 100%. You died, you died right, David and them. Solomon, with the sure mercies of David and the pass on to Solomon, they didn't go to heaven. They went to Abraham's bosom. The only, at that point of right now, the only two, or we're sure it probably went to heaven is uh, Elijah and Enoch. There's a big difference between church and Old Testament. 